guys, it's JP Dillon again, just continuing my little segment of uh, connecting your turntable and transferring your vinyl properly. So now that we've set up the arm, we need to connect everything to the machine that's going to play it through our speakers. Now, admittedly, I have it kind of easy here because I have a vintage Scott tube amplifier. Love these things. And this has a simple input on it marked Phono which you need. The reason why you need it is because the average signal of a turntable is maybe 5 millivolts for a magnetic cartridge. Um, a CD player, iPod, DVD player can be anywhere from 500 millivolts to about 2 volts depending on the dynamic range capabilities of the piece of equipment. So as you might imagine, connecting a turntable an old style turntable to a new piece of equipment that doesn't have a funnel input yields very little to no sound. Um, assuming you do crank it up all the way and hear something, you're also going to notice that it sounds really tinny and like crap. Okay, that's because there's an equalization curve, sorry about the flash, equalization curve built into the funnel preamp which makes everything a flat response. So what do you do? Well, it's simple. What you need to do is you need to get yourself a phono preamp or an older receiver that has a preamp built into it. Just about any receiver built before about 1990 is going to have a phono preamp. Uh, if it's built after 1990 and you don't have a phono input, you can purchase an external phono preamplifier for anywhere from about $25 for a piece of crap to $200 for something really nice. If you're just getting into vinyl, you might want to start out with the cheap thing because the turntable hobby can get expensive. So, if you have the straight, old-fashioned amplifier and turntable that just has the phono input, depending on how many connections your turntable has is how you will hook this up. Your left and right RCAs go here, and the ground wire, if the machine does not have an attachment for it clearly labeled, can just be attached to any ground or chassis metal on the machine. As an example, I attach my ground here because, well, it's convenient. Now, um, as far as preamplifiers, uh, there's a couple of places in town that sell them. Most prominently is a classic audio repair at 34th and Adams, shameless plug. Um, they sell them for about 40 bucks, and uh, it's a quick and easy solution to the problem. But I have ancient receivers. Here's another one that I use. Here's a Sansui 4000A. Yes, I have different receivers for whatever I feel like listening to. This has got two photo inputs, which is kind of handy, one and two. Um, but yeah, uh, so in short, if you have a new receiver, you uh, have to get a photo preamp. If you have an old receiver, you don't. Now, there are some instances where a new turntable, uh, like made by Sony or Newmark or uh, you know what have you, they usually have a phono preamplifier built in. And there's usually a switch either on the back of the machine or it would be underneath the mat here. You can lift up the mat and on the new ones they have a window underneath with a little switch that says uh, amp on or off. And in which case you can just connect that to anything. Um, but that will give you an idea as to what you're up against. I strongly suggest going with an older vintage turntable simply because uh, they were built better especially if you go with a direct drive or an AC motor and um, they'll probably outlast the cheap plastic thing that you bought at Costco for 80 bucks so uh, yeah do it favorable brands of the vintage eras uh, would be Pioneer, Marantz, Sansui, Kenwood, Techniques, JVC um, Akai made a couple of sleeper models too but yeah, for the most part they were just kind of mediocre um, don't buy the DC belt drive turntable. And so you're asking, Jordan, how can we figure out what's the DC and what's the AC? Good question. The direct drive turntables are labeled clearly DD or direct drive. Duh. Now, with an AC motor, most AC motors are about the size of a grapefruit. They're pretty big. However, there are some exceptions. Uh, most notably, the classic AR turntable as pictured here that's on my workbench. The AR turntable has a tiny motor 
it's actually about the size of a DC motor, but it's AC, so that is the exception. Thorns have fairly small motors too. Uh, they're about maybe three inches in diameter, but they're also AC. They, they last a fairly long time. Uh, a good example of an AC motor turntable would be a Pioneer PL112D. That's a pretty beefy AC motor. Uh, typically, all that needs to be done is the motor needs to be pulled apart, all the grease is removed, and new, fresh machine oil put in, and they just stay alive. Um, if you find a turntable with an AC motor that's seized, walk away. The reason why is when it seizes, it draws huge amounts of current, and the motor heats up, and uh, the enamel on the windings distort, and the inductance of the motor coils change, and the motor does not behave like it should. Uh, common case in point, Girards. There are a series of Girards built in the 1960s, uh, like the Lab 40, uh, all the Girard turntables that go in the KLH machines. Those were piss poorly built motors and they're all starting to fail. I've noticed that a lot of them are starting to get speed jitter. They'll go fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, and it's because the motor isn't syncing to the AC line anymore. Um, and that's due to a distortion in the windings uh, caused by excessive heat. And that usually happens because nobody takes care of the damn thing and the motor seizes up. Um, and uh, also, uh, there was one other topic that I was going to po point out regarding AC motor turntables. Um, oh yes, grommet sag. Uh, a lot of times the grommets in the old turntables will get mushy or gooey and the motor will sag and the belt won't track at the right height and you'll get speed flutter and you'll get it running too fast or too slow. Um, but yeah, if you want to get your turntable serviced, head on down to where I work, Classic Audio Repair in San Diego 3401 Adams. Shameless plug, I know. I've been working there for years. I used to do this as a hobbyist. I've been doing it in the professional world for almost 15 years now. Um, we will fix your turntable. And if we can't, we'll just tell you straight up. So anyway, shameless plug over. Uh, stay tuned for the next videos that I'm going to be releasing regarding transferring your vinyl to digital. Stay tuned.